good day and welcome to NGL Fine Chem Limited Q2 FI24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Mayor. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Neera. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining this Q2 FI24 earnings conference call of uh, NGL Fine Game Limited. The results and investor updates have been uploaded on the stock exchanges. Uh, to take us through the results of this quarter and answer your questions, we have with us today Mr. Rahul Nache, Managing Director, and Mr. Rajesh Sawande, Full Time Director and Chief Financial Officer. We'll be starting the call with a brief overview of the financial performance, which will then be followed by the Q&A session. I want to remind you all that everything said in this call reflecting any outlook for the future, which can be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the uncertainties and risks that the company faces. These uncertainties and risks are included but not limited to what we've mentioned in our annual reports, which you'll find on our company website. With that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Rahul. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhishek. Good morning to all of you. I am Rahul Nakhne, Managing Director of NGL Fine Chem. A very good day to you and thank you for joining us today for the Q2 FY24 earnings call of NGL Fine Chem Limited. I trust this call finds each of you in the best of health and cheer and I hope those celebrating had a safe and enjoyable Diwali season. I am pleased to present to you the financial highlights and our company's performance for the Q2 FY24. It has been a strong quarter for our company. Our revenue from operations showed a healthy increase, marking a 13.5% growth over the previous quarter and 18.4% growth year on year. Sales stood at 80.18 crores for Q2 FY24. Our EBITDA margin recorded a significant improvement to 13.97 crores, reflecting a close to a 45% increase quarter on quarter and about 52% increase year on year. This performance positively impacted our EBITDA margins, which now stand at 17%, a 312 basis point improvement over Q1 FY24 and a 347 basis point increase from Q2 FY23. Profit after tax reached 40.48 crores, showcasing a 13% growth since the last quarter and a 124% increase from the same quarter in the previous year. As we delve deeper into the performance of the quarter, it is evident that the strategic decisions made have borne fruit. Our operational performance has been robust and we have successfully translated it into sustained growth, even amid, amidst uh, economic uncertainties and global headwinds. This growth is especially significant as it comes at a time when the industry-wide average realizations have seen a year-on-year -year decline. However, we have countered this with substantial volumetric growth and we anticipate that this momentum should carry forward into the subsequent quarters. Our margins have recorded favorable shift thanks to a significant reduction in raw material costs. This has allowed us to bounce back to our standardized margin levels. Staying put to our prior guidance, we maintain that our business sustainable EBITDA margin profile will persist in the 70 to 22% band. While demand has shown signs of recovery, we remain vigilant of the persistent challenge. Issues such as Currency availability in markets like Egypt, Pakistan and Turkey have adversely impacted demand. Although our direct exposure to African markets is minimum, the currency volatility in these regions has an indirect influence on our operations through its effects on our customer base. Our resilience during these challenging times was bolstered by our broad and diversified API offerings, as well as the ongoing expansion of our portfolio. Our strategic choice not to be overly dependent on any single product, customer, or geography has served us well as we have seen a resurgence in demand for several of our long-standing products. On the capital expenditure front, we have maintained a measured execution pace. We are waiting for more definitive signs of demand recovery before we expedite our capex rate initiators. Until then, we maintain committed, we remain committed in funding our capital expenditures from the internal accruals generated from our business operations, 
thereby avoiding the need to leverage our balance sheet. Now, as we look ahead, we do so with cautious optimism. The indicators are promising and the strategies we have in place are robust, but we are ever mindful of the fluctuating market dynamics. As I draw this opening address to a close, I must issue an important disclaimer. We have observed that competitors might have used the detailed information from our public disclosures to their advantage. Therefore, we will be exercising greater discretion in the details we share going forward. We request your understanding and cooperation in refraining from asking product-specific questions during this call, as such queries will not be entertained. This step is crucial to safeguard our strategic interests and maintain our competitive advantage in the marketplace. With that overview, I now open the floor to any questions you may have, keeping in mind the disclaimer I have shared. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. And congratulations, Rahul and the team. Uh, we have really done very well in the last two, three quarters in spite of the environment being quite tough. So, Rahul, uh, with regards to your initial comments and your uh, also the press release, uh, First of all, on the gross margin side, we are back to our margin, gross margin, the normalized gross margin of around 35 percent. And I understand from your initial commentary that the currently the product prices or the relations are still lower. So two parts to it. One of one is this sustainable going ahead, and also is this largely due to the raw material price being favorable to us, or is there some product mix change also? That is my first question. Yeah, th thanks for your um, uh, for your interest and your call. Um, with regard to your uh, first question, whether this is sustainable, well, I would like to you know just give a cautious uh, sort of a note over here that uh, this is the first quarter where we have seen you know uh, the recovery coming out well. Um, if you have seen uh, quarter on quarter starting from early this year, that is Q4 of uh, the last financial year, Q1 of this year, and now Q2 of this year, it has slowly been improving. And uh, I am quite optimistic now that our worst part is behind us, and going forward we should be able to uh, uh, look at things with optimism. But I would just like to add a, you know, a note of caution that there are too many changes now taking place in the geopolitical uh, 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 area. So, there is a lot of political uncertainty coming and this tends to impact business sooner or later. So, I would be a little bit cautious probably for another one or two quarters before I commit uh, how sustainable these margins are. Uh, again, I repeat, I am uh, cautiously optimistic. And uh, your second question was, was this because of change in product mix or was it because of the raw material prices? So in this, uh, I have to tell you that it's largely because of the, uh, the raw material prices coming down. Because uh, there has not been any drastic change in the product mix as such. But uh, chemical prices which were at a sort of a peak last year have more or less you know, fallen down to not probably their pre-COVID levels yet. But uh, they have retraced at least 60-70% of the, of the gains which they had earlier. And with regards to the product prices uh, for us, what is the trend like? The way you mentioned the raw material prices have retraced. So on the product prices side, if you could share some details. 
Well, on a selling prices also we have seen a fall in uh, our price realization. And uh, prices have gone down. It varies from product, product to product. And also depends on the depth of competition for each product. So we have seen products coming down right from 15% going up to almost 40% in terms of uh, uh, selling price. And sir, with regards to the uh, geography wise and customers and product wise, uh, we have been observing for last two, three quarters the product concentration as well as the consumer concentration with regards to the top three has been reducing. So, and also on the geography side. So, is this growth which is coming in now becoming like where you have entered some new market and those new markets are giving us growth and at the same time the new customers? Uh, are giving us the truth? Uh, I don't know. Geography wise, there is like hardly any change actually. It's more or less stable. Yeah. But what you are saying with regard to product is definitely true. Our product uh, uh, concentration is coming down. So, about a year ago, we had almost 75% coming from the top 10 products. Today, our sales. That uh, top 10 product contribute to only about 65% of our sales. So this is because uh, uh, the newer products which we have uh, which we have introduced have started uh, gaining strength, and now it's you know it's a much wider basket, and therefore reliability on any particular product is gradually coming down. Last question on the KPEG. You have mentioned that you have gone slow and typically utilized your internal accruals till now and not try to borrow funds at the time when the demand was not uh, suitable to us. But with the current uh, scenario, the demand improvement is being there. Uh, so when do we expect the capex uh, being accelerated in terms of the money being spent? And what kind of timeline we can see for the green fee capex to come through? Yeah, meaning right now, as I said, we are looking cautious, uh, cautiously optimistic. We'll probably check, wait for one more quarter to see how things go before we commit ourselves completely to this. So we will probably take our call uh, early next year, next calendar year. Sure. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, best wishes. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one. To ask the question. Next question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for uh, for a uh, uh, revival that we have seen in this uh, quarter, Rahul and team. Uh, uh, on uh, you know uh, product realization front, Rahul, you know uh, are we nearing the end of you know where, uh, product prices? Uh, uh, correcting or you still feel that the correction is left in the market and you know uh, your views on you know price realization uh, going down further from here and how much has been the price realization fall on an average across our 25 26 products yeah so uh, it's very difficult to uh, predict, you know, whether we have reached uh, the bottom and uh, things will go up or not. But uh, my personal feeling is we are more or less at the uh, bottom of the bell curve right now. Um, it should definitely go up from where we are right now in terms of realizations uh, and uh, pricing. But uh, as to whether this will happen in the next six months or a year, that is, uh, uh, you know, a big question which I cannot answer, frankly. So we have to wait and watch and see how it goes. But I am pretty hopeful we are more or less at the bottom of the bell curve. Sure. And how much has been the fall, let's say, compared to last year? How much has been the fall in prices? And if we compare the prices, uh, current prices with, let's say, pre-COVID prices, uh, are we near that prices or we have fallen below that as well? As I said, meaning it varies from product to product. There are some products where we have seen a 15% drop in realization. There are some products where we have seen a 40% drop in realization. Okay. So it just varies over a wide uh, margin. And it depends on the depth of competition for each product. Okay. 
and for some products have we seen prices below pre covid levels also or it's not it's still higher than pre covid for most of the products um i have not put a thought to that actually but let me think about it i would say that uh, we are more or less at the pre covid levels yeah okay 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 In some, we are probably lower than the pre-COVID levels, also. Okay. Okay. My second uh, question was on the current capacity utilization uh, at uh, our uh, standalone and uh, macro tech level. How is the? Uh, what is the current capacity utilization? And let's say we are at eighty crore quarterly run rate. At full capacity utilization, with some outsourcing that we used to do, you know, when things uh, when when the markets were buoyant. uh what kind of revenue can we do from the existing infrastructure given the price fall that we have seen uh, in the products um i think uh, we will probably be able to do between 350 to 400 crores uh, along with a uh, little bit of outsourcing because uh, we are doing very little outsourcing now everything is being yeah. done more or less either at angel or at macro tech Mm-hmm. Uh, we will probably start outsourcing uh, in the next 3 uh, months mm-hmm. so that we start building up capacity gradually as the markets come back so uh, and we we were you know uh, in uh, like 2 years back we were also looking to uh, increase our outsourcing from let's say 5% to 15% you know that also you know maybe in case you face some capacity constraint hopefully over the next 2 3 quarters we'll also be looking to increase that and with that can we touch let's say 450 crore kind of revenues from existing setup that would be a little ambitious i would still go by uh, let's say uh, up to 400 crores is what i think we can do with current levels okay 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 and uh, uh, sorry rahul i'll request to come back for a follow up question Sure, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. A request to all the participants: Please restrict to two questions per participant, and please join the queue again for a follow-up question. And anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one to join the queue. The next question is from the line of Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, first of all, sir, uh, it's a pleasure to see the company doing uh, coming back uh, to the normal bandwidth, um, given the challenges that we have still seen in the industry. So it's a good thing to see our performance and uh, the resilience of our business model. Uh, now, coming to the question, sir, uh, one thing which I just feel, given uh, having started the company for so long, is that uh, at one point we were at a point where we wanted to. Uh, expand our capacity and seeing the market condition, we had slowed down our plans quite a bit. Even now, you say that maybe start of calendar year is where you'll take a call on that part. Can you share more of your thoughts on the expansion? Where we are, where we, how do we want to proceed on that, and uh, by when do we intend to complete the whole of the capex? And uh, also on the product development side, which is something which would be very critical for us to grow from the levels we are to the uh, next level if we have to. Yeah. So uh, as I said, we are still a little cautious on uh, doing more uh, fresh investments. Hmm. So we really are not sure whether the recovery is complete, and uh, we are, uh, you know, the bell curve is completed, and things will start going up. So we will probably take this call uh, early next year hmm. on uh, the investments. Hmm. But uh, just to inform you, uh, we have got some. Proceeding with uh, uh, the investment right now at a much lower speed, speed of course, uh, close to ninety percent of the civil work is already completed, hmm. and uh, some uh, equipment ordering in terms of you know long delivery item uh, is already started, but we are not fully committed to uh, putting all equipment in machinery in. But uh, once we decide, it shouldn't take us more than a month, a year to twelve, fifteen months. I mean, between twelve and fifteen months to complete the project right now. So we'll take this call uh, early next year. So if we do that, then uh, in twenty-four, twenty-five, uh, we should have the plant uh, up and running. 
okay okay and uh, what about the product development like uh, because one thing which i feel is that the product basket we currently have is has its own limitations in terms of growth uh, so it is very important that we expand our product basket significantly so that we can tap new uh, product ideas and do the scale up hello uh, yeah. you know product development is going on in a pretty uh, right now we are our total product uh, range has gone to close to about uh, 28 apis now so product is going at a pretty uh, good clip i did not understand the question what was that i don't know i what i was trying to get the insight is more on these new products like uh, the new product basket if we are expanding our product basket how are we doing on that front and if we are doing much more on that part expanding this basket further uh, like from 28 do are we online to bring keep adding 3 4 5 products every year that we intend yeah, yeah. our target is to reach 35 uh, apis by 25 yes. so yeah yeah that's we are very much on target with that okay 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 great great yeah that's from my side thank you yeah thank you participants you may press star and one to ask a question Next question is from line of Devashish Niyogi from Digital Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, so congratulations uh, first for a very good uh, set of number. Uh, you have been always uh, cautiously uh, giving guide, uh, guidance uh, with respect to uh, margins, volume growth, and have been very open and transparent in answering uh, our question. Uh, so my question to you, sir, is. Uh, Uh, given that uh, we are uh, the market leader in the top uh, five products and also gaining market share in the next five, uh, and we also say that uh, we have the chemistry skills. Now, my question to you is that if we have both in this context, we should have pricing power. And you always said that we don't have pricing power, not even two rupees. In some one of the con call many quarters back, why is it so, sir? Being a market leader and also having uh, chemistry skills we still don't have pricing power yes yeah, so i would i'd like to address that in two ways number one is that uh, you know uh, we are in a b2b business and uh, pricing power normally comes from more from you know uh, either ip or from uh, brand power now brand power does not exist here because it's b2b and we are doing only generics ip also does not exist because again we are doing generic products which are out of uh, patent for a long time so how do you get pricing power in a b2b business it's uh, generally not possible that's that's the first and the second part is that there is always competition now if we try to price uh, products uh, uh, very high up uh we were it will be very easy to flood the market because people will immediately start entering the market uh, as competitors and uh, competition goes up so margins will come down sooner or later pricing power in a b2b business is very difficult so sir then uh, what is our edge uh you know if if uh, if we being the market leader and we have also chemistry skills and we are supplying to uh, the top 5 6 uh, global animal api players uh then uh, what is our actual edge i thought you know uh, maintaining a uh, great quality uh, and uh, servicing on time uh, our retention of customers has been 99% these are edge so uh, it's Should that that not indirectly give us pricing power over the years with uh, sticky customers? No, see, uh, in in a in in a in a B two B business, the buyer is always much well informed, and uh, as a as a policy, no company keeps a monopoly the monopoly supplier, so they always spread the risk. by buying from multiple sources mm-hmm. 
Now, having said that, uh, even if I am the, 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 let's say, lowest cost supplier, no company will buy more than 60% of their requirement from me. 40% will still go to other two uh, suppliers because they want to keep their supply chain intact. So, uh, pricing power uh, does not work, not in a B2B business. Okay, so my uh, second question, sir, is uh, is uh, we are getting into uh, uh, every year two to three pro products almost, and we target to get into 35. But the opportunity size of each of these, uh, you know, uh, products is very small. So uh, in the pipeline to 35, uh, do you have anything uh, you need not discuss uh, in detail, like you said in the conference, uh, in the beginning of the conference about specific strategy? of the product itself, but do we have anything in pipeline uh, to the build-up of 35 where the size of that particular product is huge with respect to either the product itself or where you are servicing with respect to geography? Yeah, so uh, uh, we have slightly changed the product strategy. So in addition to some niche products, we are also doing some volume products now. And uh, volume products uh, have got a large potential, but at the same time, these are already existing products with multiple suppliers uh, in place. Uh, what we are doing is we are targeting those products where there is only, there are only Chinese suppliers. So we will probably be the first uh, from India to start manufacturing these products. So we are offering basically uh, customers a China plus one uh, alternative. That's great, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next follow-up question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, in, in, in case, you know, uh, earlier we used to, we had indicated that uh, for the new green tree capex, our uh, pilot plant will be uh, ready before the uh, the entire, uh, the bigger plant comes uh, on stream. So, so that, you know, we will uh, do the validation batches uh, earlier and save on that three, six, uh, month of, of uh, stability studies which we require for uh, you know uh, for starting production from the new plant. So let's say if uh, the if the new uh, if the greenfield capex test well, takes uh, another 12 to 15 months from the time we decide to go ahead uh, with installation of uh, machineries and all. So will the uh, pilot plant come into uh, production earlier than the, the the entire plant gets completed and we save on that. Uh, you know, six months of time? Yeah, yeah. The pilot plant is scheduled to start uh, by uh, Q1 uh, FY next year. Okay, okay. So that is expected to start even if we, you know, let's say if we delay the starting of for the entire plant. Correct. So that, that, has, that has not been stopped. Pilot plant work is going on right now. Sure, sure. And on uh, product basket, you know, we have we have been targeting to add you know five molecules every year. So you know, uh, as you have stated that we we have uh, you know also started looking at higher vol uh, higher volume uh, uh, and you know relatively bigger uh, size of product. So let's say you know earlier our uh, target molecule size was generally in the range of around 20 to 50 crore. So with the new products that we have already added or which we plan to add, are those products, you know, let's say their market size uh, bigger than uh, what, uh, you know, what currently we have in our product basket? Yeah, two of the products which we are targeting have a much larger market size. Okay, so that can be, let's say, few hundreds of crores as well. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, thirdly, on the uh, ge uh, geography-wise split, sir, you know, uh, we, uh, like, uh, can you tell us, like, some of the geographies which are doing well for us, you know, let's say, which have bounced back now and, you know, where the demand is good for uh, a veterinary product? Uh, sorry, uh, which are the geographies which have bounced back, you're asking? 
Yeah, yeah, which are doing well now and demand is back to... Well, basically, East Asia is uh, bouncing back right now. Okay, uh, okay. And some of the new geographies which we are trying to penetrate and where we have got some success? Yeah, so East Asia is bounced back. Europe is doing well right now. Latin America is doing well. Uh, West Asia and Africa is still in trouble. Okay, primarily because of the currency issues. Because of money problems, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you, Nikhil. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Faisal Hawa from Edgy Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. So, sir, uh, going forward, that we are uh, going to be in some kind of an expansion almost every year. Uh, what is the ROC and ROE that we are targeting, uh, which we will maintain, given that we are a B two B business and uh, you know, uh, as such, pricing power will never uh, come to us very easily. So, uh, will, will we maintain discipline on that? I am unable to, uh, you know, comment on that because we don't give forward guidance on uh, on uh, our turnover or on, on our profits. But as I said, you know, the long-term margins in our business are more like 70 to 22 percent. So, we have just reached the lower level of that level of that margin. We hope to take it to a little higher median going forward. Hello. Oh, yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity again. One clarification, in a previous participant, you said the pilot plant will start by quarter one of next year. So you're talking about calendar year or you're talking about the financial year? Financial year. Financial year, sure. And sir, if you may permit to ask a question with regards to the product registration in Europe, uh, in the quarter four call, you had mentioned that for three products, you expected to get uh, approval by December and you were to file uh, for approval for further three products. So, any details you can share on the same? Yeah, so we have uh, filed for, so there are two uh, types of approvals you one can take. One is known as CEP and the second is by filing DMS. So, we have filed for uh, CEPs uh, for three products. Unfortunately, uh, uh, it's taking much longer than we anticipated. Normally, pre-COVID, pre they used to give a approval within about 15 to 18 months. Uh, unfortunately, right now it's been close to about uh, 21 months since our filing and there are still queries being raised. So, they are doing it at a far much slower pace uh, as compared to pre-COVID le levels. So, right now we think it might probably take another six months uh, to get the approval. And in addition to that, we have also filed uh, for uh, five uh, products. We have filed EMFs in various countries in the in Europe. So those are also under registration right now. Sure. So this is three plus five total eight, right? Three plus five, correct. Okay. And sir, further on the product side, in the previous March twenty three call, uh, we had mentioned that we had gone from uh, we had added further two products, and also we were trying to do validation of further two products. So, the commercialization of this four product has already started, so the commercial sales have started. Hello. Uh, I think now we have 28 products in uh, commercial uh, production. And uh, so, this was six months ago, no, which we had spoken. So, yeah, they are more or less now in, uh, in commercial production, yeah. And so just one last thing, uh, with regards to our Greenfield KPEX, uh, uh, you had mentioned that uh, we will go to the regulated market with our Greenfield KPEX coming on stream, once it comes on stream. So, and also our pilot plant you expect to start by next year first quarter. So, are we preparing the groundwork uh, for the introduction of some of these products in the regulated markets from the Greenfield? Uh, facility? 
No, the greenfield is being done primarily for the regulation markets only. Hmm. With that in view point, yeah. Sure. So basically, the groundwork, the preparation in terms of product side, uh, we are at a somewhere advanced stage of doing on the product side. Can that be a right assumption? Yes. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Rahul. Uh, best wishes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Nachane for closing comments. So oh, thank you everyone for participating in this call. If you have any additional questions or wish, or wish to engage with us further, please uh, reach out to our investor relations partner, the Investment Lab. Their email address can be found on the back of the investor presentation. We look forward to uh, our next conversation again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of NGL Fine Chem Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.